Hello and welcome back to the HIV RNA Test Guide Podcast, uh, your trusted source for HIV information and resources. Glad to be here. Today we're diving deep into the potential impact of the recent U.S. foreign aid freeze right. on HIV treatment in Africa. Specifically, we're focusing on PEPFAR, the president's emergency plan for AIDS relief, yeah. and what this freeze could mean for the millions who rely on it. It's a really critical situation that's uh, that's really got a lot of people concerned. Yeah, to really understand the scope of this, yeah. we should probably talk about what PEPFAR does. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what's it all about? So PEPFAR has been absolutely instrumental in turning the tide against HIV and AIDS, especially in Africa. Okay. Um, and it's not just about, you know, handing out antiretroviral medications or ARVs. Oh. It's a very comprehensive approach. So it's not just treatment. It's kind of the whole... It's the whole package. It's the whole shebang. Okay. Um, you know, it's focused on strengthening healthcare systems, training healthcare workers, right. supporting HIV testing in initiatives. It's about building a sustainable infrastructure for HIV prevention and treatment. So this aid freeze is sort of like throwing a wrench in that whole system that's been built up. Unfortunately. Um, and we're seeing reports of clinic closures in several African countries. Absolutely. Uh, that's just the tip of the iceberg, I'm afraid. Oh, what? You know, we're seeing layoffs of healthcare workers, disruptions to HIV testing and treatment programs. Yeah. And just this growing sense of fear and uncertainty among people living with HIV. That makes sense. It's really going to disrupt a lot of people's lives. And we have a story here yeah. of Florence Mokumene, a 53-year-old woman from Zimbabwe right. who was diagnosed with HIV back in 2016 mm -hmm. and regained her health thanks to PEPFAR-funded programs. Yeah, it's stories like Florence's that really bring this whole issue into perspective. Right. Before PEPFAR, HIV was often seen as a death sentence in many parts of Africa. Oh, wow. Um, but PEPFAR changed that narrative. Ooh. It gave people hope and millions of people a chance at a longer, healthier life. So what happens if these programs are disrupted? Well, that's the big question, right? Oh, yeah. There's a very real concern that all the progress that's been made could be lost. Right. And we could see a resurgence of the epidemic. Um, you know, you have to imagine the impact on people who are forced to interrupt their treatment regimens right. because of these closures or a lack of access to medication. And it's not just the medication access, right? It's like mm. if the healthcare system in general is weakened. You're absolutely right. It's going to affect everybody. It's not just about the pills. Right. You know, it's right. about the entire ecosystem of HIV care and support. Oh, wow. We're talking about testing, counseling, yeah. mental health services, all these vital components of a comprehensive HIV response. So this freeze has far reaching implications. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And it's got to be psychologically difficult for people too. Oh, think about the anxiety and fear right. that people must be experiencing right now. Yeah. The thought of this epidemic coming back, the worry about accessing these life saving medications. Yeah. The stigma and discrimination. It's just a huge burden to bear. It's a reminder that we're not just talking about sort of policy decisions. Yeah. We're talking about people's lives. Exactly. It's about people's health and well-being, their yeah. dignity. Now, the Trump administration has mentioned these waivers to continue some aspects of PEPFAR. Right. But what do those actually mean? How substantial are those? Well, that's where things get a bit complicated. Okay. The details of these waivers are still very unclear, and there's a lot of concern that they just might not do enough to address the problem. Okay. So they're not really reassuring anyone? No, not really. So, for instance, I read that they might restrict access to pre-EPI for certain groups. Right. Um, and for our listeners who might not know, pre-EPI is a medication that can drastically reduce the risk of HIV infection. Exactly. It's, it's a game clear. changer. Right. Um, and, you know, restricting access to this, especially for the most vulnerable, yeah. seems to go against the very goals of public health. Yeah, it seems counterproductive. It really does. It raises some serious questions about, you know, the ethics of these decisions. Yeah. So these waivers seem to be causing more problems than they're solving. Yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. They haven't calmed anyone's anxieties. Right. Um, and, you know, they've been criticized for being vague, uh -huh. for not addressing this need for long-term sustainable funding right and for really jeopardizing the progress that has been made in the fight against hiv and aids yes in africa so a judge has temporarily lifted the freeze right but we don't know what's going to happen in the long term exactly the temporary lift offers some hope yeah but it's not a solution 
the future of PEPFAR right. and the lives of millions of people is still uncertain. Yeah. And this uncertainty has got to be causing anxiety for people. Oh, absolutely. It's causing a ripple effect of anxiety through the global health community. PEPFAR is considered one of the most successful global health initiatives in history. It's true. It's credited with saving over 26 million lives globally, and it's really transformed the fight against HIV and AIDS in Africa. And it's been a model of efficiency, too. Yes. Uh, Professor Francois Venter, a leading HIV expert, has called it right. the most efficient deployment of health resources I have seen. Wow. So it's a really effective program. It is. But now it's in jeopardy. Yeah. It's a precarious situation, and it needs our attention. Yeah. The stakes are really high here. They are. So what does all this mean for the people on the front lines? The healthcare workers facing layoffs, people living with HIV worried about accessing treatment, and the communities grappling with this potential resurgence. Well, that's what we really need to understand. We yeah. need to understand the nuances of the situation. Okay. What could happen if nothing is done? Yeah. And what we can actually do moving forward. There's a lot to unpack here. There is. So stay tuned as we delve deeper into the potential impacts of this aid freeze. Yes. And explore what it means for the future of HIV treatment in Africa. It's a really important topic. It isn't. One of the things that really worries me about this whole situation yeah. is the potential for drug-resistant HIV. That's a really good point, and I wanted to ask you about that. Yeah. Why are treatment interruptions so dangerous yeah. in terms of drug resistance? It's basically evolution. You see? Okay. When someone stops taking their medication, the virus can start replicating again. Right. But the thing is, this replication isn't always perfect. Uh -huh. Mistakes can happen. Mutations arise. Okay. And some of those mutations can make the virus resistant to the drugs oh, wow. that it was previously vulnerable to. So it's like a tougher version of the virus. Exactly. And that would be a huge setback for sure. Wow. You know, it's a reminder that HIV is constantly evolving. Right. We need to stay ahead of it. Consistent treatment is key. So these ripple effects of the aid freeze are pretty scary then. They are very scary. Yeah. It's not just about individual health at that point. It's right. about global health security. You know, if these drug resistant strains start spreading, it could undo decades of progress. Wow, yeah, that's a really good point. Now we've talked about yeah. the potential downsides of the waivers, but are there any upsides? Hmm, that's a good question. Are there any aspects that you see as potentially positive or are they just totally inadequate? I think it's important to acknowledge that, you know, any funding is better than no funding. Okay. Right? So even with the limitations, the waivers could help to soften the blow a little. Okay. So it's not a complete solution, but... It's not a solution. It might. It's a band-aid. On a gaping wound. Right. So what happens when that band-aid comes off? Well, that's what we don't know. We're just waiting to see what happens, right. you know, what the long-term plan is. And this uncertainty is really hard on yeah. people who are working on the front lines. And it's got to be demoralizing for healthcare workers who have dedicated their lives to this. Absolutely. Right. Imagine, you know, pouring your heart and soul into this cause, yeah. seeing all this amazing progress, yeah. and then suddenly having to shut down clinics, lay off colleagues, right. and turn away patients. It's heartbreaking. It's just heartbreaking. And it's got to lead to some brain drain too, right? Okay. Just yeah. leaving the field. It takes years to train these healthcare workers yeah. to build up expertise and losing all these skilled professionals would be a major setback. Yeah, so we could be losing a whole generation of healthcare workers. It's not an exaggeration. Wow. This could have a devastating impact on the healthcare infrastructure. And for people living with HIV, what kind of message does this send? A terrible one. Right. It says you're not a priority. Right. And that is just unacceptable. Yeah, it feels like a betrayal after all this progress. It really does. Could other countries or organizations step in to fill the gap? I mean, there are other players out there. Yeah. But it's unlikely that anyone could replace what PEPFAR does. And not a simple fix. It's not a simple fix at all. Mm -hmm. PEPFAR is a cornerstone of the global response. Yeah. And its absence would be very noticeable. Yeah. It would take a huge global effort to even come close to addressing this. And that kind of coordination isn't easy. Global health diplomacy is very, very complex. Yeah, this is a complicated situation, but are there any bright spots at all? You know, that's a great question. Yeah. And it's important to remember that even in the face of all of this, right. there's always hope. There's always people finding ways to adapt. So there are people fighting the good fight, even now. Absolutely. Trying to keep these programs afloat. For example, we're seeing a resurgence of community-based healthcare. 
Oh, wow. People are coming together to support each other, share resources. That's great. And find creative solutions. That's really inspiring to hear. It really is. It's a reminder that even when institutions fail, people don't. Right. These community-led initiatives are really interesting. Yeah. Can you give us some specific examples? Yeah. So in some areas, community health workers are stepping up. Okay. To fill the gaps left by the layoffs. They're providing basic care, delivering medications, offering support. Wow. So they're like the frontline responders now. In a way, yes. Why? Wow. They're using their knowledge of their communities, their oh. cultural sensitivities, and their social networks to provide this vital care. It sounds like local knowledge is really powerful. It is, absolutely. These community-led initiatives are a testament to the resilience of people yeah. and the commitment to fighting HIV, even when things are really tough. What about innovations in treatment or prevention? Are there any developments there? There are actually some very promising ones. Okay. Researchers are exploring long-acting injectable medications. Oh, wow. So instead of taking pills every day, you could get an injection once a month. Wow. That would be amazing. Or even less frequently. Right. That would be a game changer. It could be a game changer, especially when access to healthcare is limited. Are there any other innovations you're excited about? Another really exciting area is broadly neutralizing antibodies. Now, I know antibodies are part of the body's natural defenses, but... Yes. Can you explain how those could be used for HIV? So these broadly neutralizing antibodies yeah. are engineered to target the HIV virus, uh -huh. and they can actually prevent it from infecting cells. So they act like a vaccine? Potentially, yes, ah. or even a treatment. <laughs> That's incredible. It's still early days, but the potential is huge. It's amazing how far we've come, but oh, this aid free shows that we're not done yet. Not at all. There's still a long way to go. Right. But I do believe that with research innovation and a real commitment to global health equity, yeah. we can overcome this. So even though it's a tough situation, we shouldn't lose hope. Exactly. There are people working very hard to find solutions to provide care right. and to advocate for those who are most affected. Their efforts are inspiring. They are. So it sounds like the global HIV AIDS community is at a crossroads. I think that's a good way to put it. This is a time for collaboration, innovation, yeah. and a shared vision. We've covered a lot of ground today. We have. You know, the consequences of the aid freeze the uncertainty, the impact on healthcare systems. Mm -hmm. But we've also talked about the resilience, the ingenuity, and the dedication yeah. of those on the front lines. Where do we go from here? That's the next step. Right. We need to find solutions, right. explore global partnerships, yeah. and figure out what we can all do to make a difference. This isn't just a problem for governments. No, it isn't. It's something we all need to work on. It's a global challenge, and we all need to play our part. So stay tuned as we finish this deep dive and look at what the future might hold. Yes. And how we can all help shape that future. This is a crucial moment. We've really explored a lot here. The potential consequences of this aid, freeze the uncertainties with those waivers and the impact on healthcare systems and individuals. But we've also seen some glimmers of hope, the resilience of communities, the ingenuity of researchers, and the unwavering dedication of those working on the front lines. So for our listeners, especially those in the HIV RNA test guide community, what can they do to navigate this situation? Well, that's the question we should all be asking ourselves, I think. Firstly, knowledge is power. Stay informed about the situation about PEPFAR and about HIV and AIDS in general. You know, understand the complexities, follow reliable news sources, and engage in those informed discussions. That's where resources like the HIV RNA Test Guide podcast come in. Right. We want to make sure our listeners have all the information they need. Exactly. About HIV testing prevention treatment. And it's not just about passively taking in information. Talk about these issues with people. Yeah. Share what you learn online in your communities. Raising awareness is so important for influencing policy. Because ultimately, these decision makers need to hear from the people they represent. Exactly. They need to feel the pressure from those who are directly impacted by their decisions. Right. And we can also take action on an individual level, too. Absolutely. Supporting organizations working in Africa is a huge way to make a difference. Right. Even small donations can have a big impact on those community-based initiatives. For our listeners who might be thinking, what can my little donation really do? Yeah. Think of it this way. That small donation to a community organization could help someone get transportation to a clinic to get their medication. That's right. Or it could help fund HIV testing kits. Exactly. It's about yeah. getting those vital resources to the people who need them. We can also hold our own governments accountable. Absolutely. You know, demand 
that global health funding is a priority. Yes. That decisions are based on evidence mm -hmm. and that the most vulnerable people are protected. It's not just about writing letters, though. It's about engaging in those conversations, participating in meetings, and making your voice heard however you can. So it's really a call to action for all of us. It is. We're not just bystanders here. We can all help shape a more just and equitable future. Now, amidst all this uncertainty, it's important to remember there is still hope. There is. We've come so far in the fight against HIV and AIDS. Yeah, we've seen new medications, new prevention strategies, and a growing understanding of the virus. And a shift in the way we talk about it. It's not about stigma and fear anymore. It's about compassion and understanding. And that's progress we can't lose sight of. So even with all the challenges ahead, let's hold on to that hope. Yes. That belief in the power of working together to create a world without AIDS. That's beautifully said. And to our listeners, remember, you're not alone in this. There are so many people and organizations working to support those living with HIV, to advocate for their rights and to find a cure. Stay informed, stay engaged, and stay hopeful. We can make a difference together. Thank you for joining us today on this deep dive into a really important and complex issue. We hope you found it informative and empowering. And remember, you can find more information on our website, hivrandentistguide.com. Until next time, stay safe and stay informed.